Sam's personal help and some of our topics or activities actually tied in with um, Kayla and Ingrid. So you can look at my training there. And ours is seventh grade. What does personal help involve? Learning facts about hygiene, applying information to their own lives on how to take care of themselves better. Um, reflecting in a daily journal, we were going to have the students have a journal where each day for the two weeks we posed just a general question about what the lesson was going to be on and they had to take a couple minutes in the beginning of the class to reflect and answer the question and we weren't really going to collect these journals and we weren't going to make them share because we wanted them to be honest in their responses so they were going to just get to write in them and respond to how they wanted. And then one of their final projects was going to be to interview an adult or a role model or somebody that they look up to and we actually gave them a list of questions, suggestions on how to interview them on personal health and personal well-being. For day one and two, we kind of tied them together because it was a lot of information just to split up into one lesson and it was based on the importance of diet, sleep, and exercise and how to manage your time to be able to fit all three of these things into um, your daily routines. And I had, um, for one of their activities, the first one was a time management log where they, it was pretty, it's pretty much a chart and it's Monday through Friday and then all the hours of the day and I wanted them to generally log in how they spent their time throughout the entire day. So then they would actually be able to see it in writing how they're spending their time because I feel like students at that age feel like they, you know, don't have enough time for this and that, but then when they write it down, they realize how much time they're just kind of spending leisurely throughout the day, which is fine because, I mean, they're still young and they need to have fun, but it'll help them organize their time better in order to get homework done and fit in exercise and time for sleep. Um, the next activity was uh, on the food guide pyramid, which, you know, related to Kayla and Ingrid. And I had them um, just, they each got a handout of the new pyramid and explained, you know, broke it down. And then there was um, actually a worksheet on reading labels. And it compared whole milk, 2% milk, 1% um, milk, and skim milk. And after we learned how to read labels, they were able to complete the worksheet and compare and contrast how they each um, built up to each other. And then also chocolate milk was in there too, to see how you know, much sugar was in that. So they were able to analyze um, the labels. Day three was based on dental hygiene. And we were actually going to have a dentist come in and do some demonstrations and talk about the importance of dental hygiene, especially when you're young and if you're eating a lot of candy and all that, they really need to concentrate on brushing their teeth and flossing every day. And then one of their activities for that day was a KWL chart that I wanted them to fill in. Um, when the dentist came in, I wanted them to be able to chart what they already know about dental health, questions that they you know, would like to know about so that they could already have some questions written down that they wanted to ask the dentist. And then at the end of the day, they could fill in the things that they've learned. And then there was also a handout. It was in the shape of a tooth. And it's called, I think it was called My Tooth Report or something. And I was going to assign them to each after the dentist was done, just jot down their um, favorite thing that he presented or what they found most interesting and what they benefited the most from his presentation. Um, the next day we were going to talk about supplement use, vitamins and minerals. Are they needed for teenagers? Um, and a lot of researchers believe that they are. This is an important time to receive really important vitamins that we tend to lack in our food. And following the food guide pyramid, they would have already looked at the nutrition facts. So then we'd go on to the next area of it and talk about how you don't just have to take a supplement to receive your vitamins and minerals. Um, the, how we were gonna, the activity for it, throughout the whole course of the unit, there was gonna be a word wall on a bulletin board or just a blank wall, having all the vocabulary words and different vitamins and minerals, and we were gonna incorporate that into the lesson. Um, also, we had created a supplement bing supplemental bingo card, which everything that we would have talked about throughout the minerals and the vitamins and on the word wall, they're then gonna go around and ask an interaction, interactive activity with their peers and, you know, I take a daily supplement. I know someone who takes it, and you have to get their signature on the card. There's 15 blanks. You can only sign 
each card once. Just kind of get them interacted and test their knowledge on who retained the information about, you know, what what um, food provides a lot of calcium. Well, obviously, milk would be an answer, or there's a ton of others that you could write down. But we would talk about those, and they would write them down. Um, the next day was based on life choices and dealing with peer pressure. I was going to introduce peer pressure in certain topics that come up, such as alcohol, dra um, drugs, and sex and violence was another one, bullying. And give them suggestions on ways to say no, and then our activity was going to be role playing and kind of acting out skits. I was going to divide the class into certain groups. And then I provided a handout where it was um, group one and it kind of listed a scenario and group two was a different scenario. And each group had to act out a little skit based on their scenario and it was basically just a peer pressure situation where certain students had to stand up to other ones and come together and say no to peer pressure. Uh, immunizations and antibiotics. I, this is a time where a lot of us, or middle schoolers and at least, they have to take another dose of vaccination. And they're strongly encouraged within the schools, and the schools can get in trouble by the state if they don't mandate this. Um, this is a touchy subject because some religions and some individuals choose not to get vaccinations. But we would talk about what they are, because no one really knows what they are, how they're used. There's actually a video called Immunizations at Work that the students would wa watch, which would define a lot of the key terms, what vaccines fight against versus what antibiotics fight in your bodies and um, while they watch the video they would complete a worksheet which would be in the order of the video you know when definitions come out and uh, they would become more familiar with the vaccinations that are encouraged for their time period and what they're gonna what their bodies will fight against um, just a reminder side note don't forget to get your TV uh, the next day we'll talk about acne, middle school and acne, big, big subject. Um, to begin this, after they wrote in their daily journals, they would take a survey, which would be passed out, just kind of making them think and get thinking about why maybe they had that first pimple or why they're struggling with acne right now, anxiety, stress, um, do you touch your face a lot, what kind of products do you use on your hair, you know. All uh, many scenarios of why students get acne, and then um, they would circle yes or no. And then there's a YouTube video which will be shown, and it's actually from the Today Show last year when a doctor came in and tested three different products of acne to see if they worked. Some did, some didn't. So, but on another case, another person, that same product who didn't work worked on another. So. It's all trial and error, so no one feels isolated or alone. Um, finally, to end this, we would kind of make it lighten up the field because it is a touchy subject, and make a collage of the teacher would have a whole bunch of magazines brought in with acne advertisements, individuals with acne, and they would just make a collage knowing that they're not alone and that there's options available. Um, the next one is going to be about doctors and careers in health. I prepared a PowerPoint for the students based on all the different kinds of careers in health. And it basically just kind of described all different doctors, physical therapists, phys um, physician's assistant, dentists, all different kinds of careers in health. And um, they were able to take notes on the descriptions just to kind of look into them and be familiar with them. And. Yeah, then they had a matching activity where they had to match up the doctor with um, the description. And finally, there's an interview presentation. I know this says day nine, but if you think about it, the first day is in when we discuss everything. We pass out the rubrics and we break down what we're going to talk about. Um, the interview presentation, we want the students to summarize their interview in about three minutes. They're going to get a sheet that has 20 possible questions they can ask and three important questions to incorporate into their presentation. Why they picked the individual to interview, um, what they learned and how they can apply what they learned into their own lives. And then um, they'll write a brief explanation. 
so. One thing that we forgot to say, because I don't know why, but on the first day, uh, there's a newsletter that's sent home to the parents, and depending on the class and the group of students that you have, um, because personal health is kind of a touchy subject, everyone has their own personal health habits, and you have to find what works best for yourself and for your child. Um, there's a newsletter that will go home either the first day of the lesson or the day before the lesson even the unit begins for the parents to sign in case there is a, someone in your class who does not take vaccination. They still need to learn about it, but then you need to go about teaching it in a different way, as well as some of the other issues that maybe the parent can inform the teacher, oh, this is a touchy subject with my student, or, so that way you can address it personally with them. All right, so what we're gonna do is on the first day, after they get all their work passed out, their rubric for the interview, the newsletter, and a brief explanation of the whole unit, um, the teacher will do a KWL, test what the students already know. So out of what you've already seen on our PowerPoint, your brief little explanation, what do you feel you already know about health? something and you can write that down now but with the big trick of this and a way that this could be assessed is the students keep this throughout each day of the lesson and they always write down something that they've learned and on the last day of the lesson the day of the interview you collect this to see how each three categories relate if they built upon their knowledge that they already knew and if they were able to stay focused on each day with what they were learning so they don't forget, you know, day six or the death hygiene day, or you know, they remember, they learn something on each day that they can retain and remember and have at their fingertips. So that's okay. Oh, these were our expectations. We kind of went over each of them already. The newsletter, the daily journal, a rubric, and then these were all of our activities. Which you all should have in front of you. You can pass those out. And. Yeah. 